Uh, that's cool. All right, when I stop, I say, who's crazy to you? I won't buy Shemuel Shack or Shemuel Rakan Kadash. Double winners into your apostles and elders of great ones on the well. And shalom to the whole four left. Fayala, Metallic, the deal from the side of the front of my Basically, what I want to go into is uh, the time we're heading into. Know that the hour of temptation, all right? And um, basically, this is a, a very... Um, it's a very, it's a, it's a time where many temptations are going to be, you know, presented before you, all right? As it's going to be presented before everyone in the world. And it's going to take a lot of um, gumption, a lot of will, willpower, you know, and ultimately the spirit of the Lord, the will of the Heavenly Father for you to overcome those said temptations, all right? But all these things are happening because initially, Ultimately, they're gonna um, work as buffering, um, refinement no, no. Yeah. for the chosen of the Heavenly Father. So now we're seeing different things going on. They're presenting different forms of technology, all right, and there's different things in terms of the financial market, uh, World War Three. Just in all spheres of the, the temptations being presented before the people, you're seeing everything manifest to the point where there's gonna be something. Or another, you know, there's going to be a period of things, of temptation for anyone that's in the faith to basically, you know, try and draw them out and move them to different places. For example, you had the, uh, um, you had lockdown, right? During the lockdown period, you had a lot of people go get, get put through their paces mentally, right? Having to um, face their demons head on. And basically, that's why you had a lot of um, people break up in relationships. You have breakdowns of families, you have people with financial trouble, and all kinds of shit, basically. But that was a, a form of temptation, all right? Now, um, let's get into the scripture. I've got a few scriptures. I'll get into 14, 14. The time, 14, 14. So, yeah, Revelation 3 and 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them as well upon the earth. Right, so I'll read it again. So it's in Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now this hour of temptation, I'll read on. Next point says it all, which shall come upon all the world. Alright, so basically have this time that we're heading into that the Heavenly Father is manifest for, for everyone on the earth to be tempted alright, that's the funny thing about it because everyone's going to be tried alright, and um, a lot of people are oblivious, like even right now you have a lot of people fucking up back home to their country <laughs> I hate to put it like that but um, they, they're running back to their, their, their native countries because shit's hit the fan base they're, they're being hit with a real hard time over here in the United Kingdom, America, wherever they may be. So they're, they're facing the fact that, you know, all the glitters ain't gold. You know, they came over here, they had hopes, dreams, and ambitions, and they realized that I ain't, I ain't piled for this thing over here, all right? And that's one of the forms of temptation. You have the, the prophecy written inside of, um, you know, everyone, you know, many fleeing back to their own nation, right? But, um, Basically, you're going to have it unravel in many different ways, man, where people are going to be tempted over and over again, right? But the thing that we have as a, as a, as a, uh, a leg up over that situation is what? The fact that we're being tempted prior to this great temptation being presented upon the earth. The moment you set foot in this faith, right? Basically, you're ignoring the tension of Satan, right? The adversary. And he's just non-stop basically saying you through, you know, uh, trials, trials and tribulations are being presented before you that you have to overcome, right? And only you have to keep overcoming those trials and tribulations. Otherwise, if you succumb to any of them, basically you're not worthy of the faith, right? But if you overcome them, guess what? You are worthy and it's, it's, it's another um, strap on your, sh on, your, on your shoulder, so to speak. Right, but it's basically building you up to that time of great temptation, 
correct? So that's what we have as a, as a one up over the message. So let me read again Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee for the, from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. As it said, this is coming to try everyone upon the earth. Right? There's no one exempt of this. Right? Everyone's going to be tried of this thing. And what is this thing that is going to be? Time of, uh, uh, time of um, the hour of temptation. Who's going to take the trouble? Basically, it's talking about what? It's talking about the beast system being implemented upon the earth. All right? That's why you see these things unraveling right now in terms of World War III. Right, resources being uh, uh, having great shortages, and then also you have with the financial industry, you have um, they're making moves to set in place a cashless society, right? Because they want to start, you know, see hip in the people, all right? To where the only way you can buy or sell is by you having that that mark, right? And if you don't have that mark, guess what? You ain't gonna be able to get nothing out, all right? So I want to go into this example, all right, from our Lord. This is a great example to show what we're going to be, um, what we have before us. Our shy led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Right? So this is he was led by the spirit to be tempted by the devil, right? This is you know the heavenly father puts you through your pace your paces, you know, these trials and tribulations, these hard times whereby what? Is to exercise your faith, alright? Only exercise your faith unto strength. Now when you go back to the time of Exodus. It speaks of during the four years they went through the wilderness, how the Lord, in the book of Deuteronomy, how the Lord did so to basically try their faith, see if they're worthy of having him having them becoming worthy of that um, that covenant between them and the heavenly father. Alright, that should that should let you know everything in terms of setting a standard as to what the relationship between Israel and the Heavenly Father is. Alright, that of exercising your faith, seeing if you're constantly worthy. Alright? Verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of the Most High, command that these stones be made bread. Right? Now this is Satan, you know, can manifest himself in your thoughts. A good movie, one movie that when I came into the faith that I was heavily, um, I say somewhat influenced by or like had a had a uh, had like a, a, a great effect on me was a movie Revolver by um, Guy Ritchie with um, Jason Statham, uh, Ray Liotta, um, and um, you know a couple characters. Basically, in the movie, it's basically dealing with his ego, right? Jason Statham, Jake Green, as his name is told in the movie, he basically is dealing with his ego. And his ego presents himself as the, the inner force of his mind, whereby he's tempted to do really the wrong thing, all right? And ultimately, you know, succumb to, you know, his ego. But throughout the course of the movie, he, he has two aids, being that of, um, I forgot the guy, but I know it's um, Andre 3000, another guy. I think it's Pussy from, um, um, from, um, Sopranos, Big Pussy, I think his name, or well, his nickname is in that. Like, similar guy, but they're basically coaching him through his experiences dealing with his ego, and they're basically telling him what to do as to, as to one up. And ultimately, you know, going through trials and tribulations dealing with him to the one great moment where he basically makes an appearance in a Ray Liotta's, um, Ray Liotta's um, bed you know, his bedroom, and he's place or whatever, and 
basically was like, he had to come to him and say like, look, I'm sorry that I ever said anything about you. Da -da 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 -da. You're too great for me, too powerful. He bowed and kissed his feet and then he dipped out, which was crazy. Because Ray's trying to, Ray was gunning for him. He wanted him dead, all right? So even it messed up Ray, he showed me for the first time an uh, uh, insight into the ego of Ray, Ray's character in a movie. And basically, he was all messed up because his ego was, was, or Satan, should I say, was basically having his way with him, twisting and turning him according to his will, which ultimately led to his downfall, all right? Because he, he came up against people who should have never came against him, right? But it ultimately it set Jake to a, a place of freedom, right? Whereby you had total control of the situation. And only that's what we're, we're aiming for, freedom, right? That being immortality in, in the spirit, right? As opposed to mortality in the flesh. So let me read on. So it says, um, verse 4. And he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Most High. That's the way it is. The Heavenly Father, oh, so it's lucky, how is shy, all right? Basically drew from what? The power of the word, all right? When you go into the book of um, Ephesians, I believe it is, 6, 10, it, it basically denotes all of our artillery in this faith, all right? As Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said, the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but spiritual might to the falling down the strongholds. So what we draw upon when we come back against the demons, the devil, Stuff, is what that of spiritual spiritual power right the word being the sword right your faith being the shield so on and so forth these things are going to basically galvanize you right and you can use as a great form of um, artillery against all the wiles of, of the devil so you're not ignorant of Satan's advice and Yahweh shall execute that you know perfectly right by drawing from the scripture verse 5 then the devil takes him up into the Holy Spirit set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of the most high cast thyself down for his written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up he said any time that, that thou dash thy foot against a stone right so now what Satan done Satan's turning around and said oh you oh, Shai, you know the scriptures right I know them too all right Jump, do this, because the word says this. So now you have Satan taking the words and manipulating them and flip turning them to use them against him, right? But that's the thing you want to understand. Satan knows the scriptures as well, man. Satan's aware of these things, all right? Hey, when you deal with Job, Job, our forefather, all right? A great man in the faith. What happened to him? When, when the Heavenly Father made an inquisition um, of Job to Satan, when the sons of the Most High, Satan being one of them, made an appearance before that big father. He basically, uh, he said, yo, what do you think about my servant Job? He said, yeah, he's diligent, but it's only because you put uh, a, a, um, what's that word around him? A, um, you know, uh, uh, basically, basically guarded him away. You put a, a shield around him, for lack of a better word, all right? And basically, he said, right, then have your way with him, but don't kill him. So basically, Satan sitting for your faces, right? But the point being, the reason why I mention that because he is aware, he is privy of that individual, right? The individual that holds the faith, he's aware of them. He knows what they're about. So he has a, he has a, a, a checklist of all the ways he can feel hope to um, exploit you in the faith, all right? So reading on verse, um, verse 6, it says, verse 7, sorry. Yahweh Shai said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy power. Yeah. Again the Lord, again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, <laughs> saying then, it didn't work with the scriptures. Yahweh Shai showed that he had a great understanding and grasp of the word. So he, he, he drew upon what? The lust of the flesh, all right? The spirit is willing, but what the flesh is, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing, all right? Um, I said it right the first time, all right? So now saying that, verse 10, then saith Yahweh Shai unto him, 
forget thee hence Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. Again, where did Yahweh shall draw from? Scripture, right? Cutting with the word, chewed him, Whew. left him, and that let, sent him scurrying, right? Because only had nothing to offer, to offer him all the kingdoms of the earth. But Yahweh shall knew better. What did he know? He knew that there's a kingdom of the heavenly father whereby which he would be the king of, right? Verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Alright? But this is one of the many times that Satan made an appearance to tempt him. Alright? But remember, this is after he served, he done uh, a fast of three days and three nights. So he's at his weakest. Okay? So, um, closing out. Revelation 3 and 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Alright, these are the words of the Lord. So only what is he speaking about overcoming? Overcoming. He's talking about overcoming from all the temptation, right? And hopefully being found worthy of the faith of um, to basically put uh, for a crown to be placed upon your head and a scepter to be placed in your hand and for you to sit your rear end on that that throne man judging over the children of Israel okay so I'll read it again verse 21 to him that overcometh will I grant to sit in my, with me in my throne being joint heirs of Yahweh even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne right because why the servant is greater than his master but a servant ought to be as his master Right, so you're basically gonna have to do is in your body as a living sacrifice, just as you have said, to what they will deem worthy of that salvation. Verse 22 He that hair hath an heir to hair, lamb hair with the spirit says unto the church. Right, so with that, I pray you're edified to the next one.